Hi everyone and welcome to this video on the IntelliGel Quad VCA. As the name would suggest, the Quad VCA is a collection of four high quality VCAs. So each VCA has its own CV attenuation, a variable response curve from linear to exponential, a level control or attenuator on the output, and a 6 dB boost switch. Now each VCA has its input and output down here, so if you go into channel 1 you can take the output right below it. But if you leave the output jack unplugged, the signal will then be normalized to channel 4. So as an example setup, you could have something plugged into input 1 and take that individual output and still leave channels 2 and 3 normalized to the mix output. So as well as VCA duties, it's also a functional 4 channel mixer. Now the CV inputs are also normalized. So if we plug in a CV input to the top VCA, it'll actually be normalized to the following three. Another nice touch here are the LEDs. With a positive input, they go green. And with a negative input, they glow red. I'm just going to turn up the CV input on the fourth VCA here. And so you can see at the moment all the CVs are normalized to the single input at the top VCA. Now we can break this normalization, so I'm just going to apply a positive input here on VCA3. And now you can see channel 4 is taking its CV input from the input I plugged into channel 3. Okay, so as a first little audio test here, I'm going to go from a linear response to an exponential response. Now as I do this, the volume does change, so I'm going to have to try to compensate for that on the fly. And what I've got here is just a simple sawtooth going into VCA1, and a CV input is a linear shaped envelope from the math. Now, I'm no engineer, but I did do a couple of tests just to check for channel bleed, and there are no surprises here. It does a very good job. So as long as you've got some pretty normal gain staging down the line, I don't think you're going to have any issues with bleed. Now, speaking of gain staging, one of the cool things you can do with the VCA is to push it into saturation. So just to show this visually as well, I've got a sine wave plugged into VCA1, and I'm going to take the output of VCA1 and patch it into VCA2. Then I can really lay into VCA1 and drive it, and use VCA2 as an attenuator before I go into my interface and into my DAW to prevent actually clipping my interface, which is digital clipping and not as nice. Okay, so I'm just going to patch this in now, and we can take a listen and have a look at the waveform on screen. So you can see just a straight sine wave there, so that's good. Now what I'm going to do is take a DC offset from the maths, plug it into the CV input on VCA1. I'm going to tune the VCA's response here to exponential, and that's going to allow me to really drive it with the DC offset. And there you can see the effect on the waveform. Now this actually gets a lot more interesting when we start cascading the VCA's. We get more complexity and a brighter waveform out of this. So what I'm going to do now is actually patch VCA2 into VCA3 and use VCA3 as the final attenuation and drive both VCA1 and 2 in series. Now I'm going to switch the mass to cycle mode and use it as a repeating envelope. Next up, let's smash up some drums.
And right about here is where I think it sounds awesome. Okay, so let's try it next on a break beat. And next up, let's try it on the Moog Sub-37. Now the Sub-37 is plugged into a bandpass filter over here on the left, the Radical Technologies. I'll be playing around with that as well. Here's a software 303 emulation. Okay, so now to check out some CV modulation. I've got a stereo signal coming in here, so I've used VCA1 and 2 as a stereo pair, and I've taken the outputs directly as well. I've got a single CV input, which is normalized, of course, to the two different VCAs, and I'm going to be using the filter with high resonance here as a CV source, so we can get some nice audio rate modulation on the VCAs. Now this filter gives us access to separate outputs, so 2-pole, 3-pole, and 4-pole. I'm going to take the 4-pole here and plug it into CV2 of the Quad VCA for just a little bit of a different modulation source on VCA2. I'm going to switch things up a little bit here and use the maths for channel 2. Okay, so I'm just going to switch things up a little bit here. I'm going to take the output of the math here and actually invert it and plug that into VCA1. And then I'm going to use the positive output into VCA2. This way we get a stereo effect, but they're both linked to the same modulation source. So I'm turning up the level of channel 1 to max because the CV coming in is negative.
and I'm going to dial in the positive CV on VCA2. Now I'm going to use it as a transcate, and the CV input here is just an envelope triggered by a MIDI pattern. So I'm having a lot of fun with this VCA, just using it to process a number of different samples, throwing things at it, uh, plugging in my synths and so on, just to see what we can get going with the distortion. And it may be confirmation bias, but it really does sound better to me than trying to do this kind of thing in the DAW. And that goes not just for the distortion, but even the conventional VCA use such as transcates and creating stereo effects. So that's it from me with this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you like my work and you want to see more, do consider becoming a Patreon. The link is in the description below. This will help me get a hold of a lot more modules and more variety too, for your viewing pleasure. So from me, Sammy, thank you very much for watching and take care.